Hey, what's up? This is Derek Depker, multiple number one bestselling author and founder of ebookbestsellersecrets.com. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know to write your first book and turn it into a bestseller. This is really for you if you thought about how great of an idea it would be to have a book. And this could be for a few reasons. So you have this vision of a book and it would be totes amazeballs to have a book for a few reasons. First of all, Maybe you want to make the royalties from a book or you know that it's going to improve your business. So you want to make some money or maybe it's because you care about people and you have lessons that you've learned in your life and you want to make an impact and make people happy and make the world a better place and all those wonderful things. Or maybe it's just for your own fulfillment and you want to leave a legacy. So there's a lot of great things that can happen when you write a book. So this is, this is your vision. This is what you have in mind. This is why you're taking your time right now to watch this video and go, maybe this Derek dude can tell me something about how to create this vision that I have in my mind. But it's just a vision because what you actually have, where you're starting out right now, is just you over here, no book, whatever. Life is okay. You can handle it, but it's not as good as it could be. So you're thinking about it. You know, it's just a thought in your head. And why haven't you started yet? That's my question. Why haven't you started writing a book? Well, there's a number of different reasons and it all has to do with this journey through here. Here's where you're at. Here's, here's where you want to be with this book. And the middle point is what I call the WTF zone because you have no idea what the F is involved in this territory. So you think to yourself, well, I don't know how to write a book. What are the steps that I take? No one's showed me the process of doing it. Or who am I to write a book? I mean, there's so many other people out there who've written books on whatever topic it is. I, I'm not an expert. I mean, I feel like maybe I have some sort of message for the world, but my book might not be any good. It's not any better than the other stuff out there. Or the big thing that happens is that there's, there's this big fear in the WTF zone that if you start taking the steps and you start writing the book, and you spend your time putting into it and you spend some money eventually to promote it and get the cover designed and editing. And then you're going towards this amazing best-selling book, but all that happens instead is you freaking crash and burn in fiery destruction because you spent all this time and money writing this book and it's a complete failure. And who wants to be a complete failure at anything that they do? So this is the fear that keeps people, this whole gray murky WTF zone that keeps people away from writing the first book. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go through and navigate through WTF to actually get the book that you want created, written, and actually be successful. So you have all these wonderful things and it's all sunshine and rainbows. So first of all, the challenge that people face when it comes to navigating the WTF zone is that they're thinking about this ideal outcome that they can have with the book. I mean, why do you wanna have a book? Think about that. Your answer is going to be unique to you, but why do you want to have a book? Maybe multiple motivations. You know, for me, I'll say that the money was a big thing. I started out as a struggling, broke valet parker, barely getting by, sleeping on an air mattress for years. And I wanted to make some money and actually, you know, be able to afford to sleep on a real bed for once at some point in my life. And so this is, I was, you know, hustling to make it in the music business here in Los Angeles when I, I first moved out. And I knew a book would be some way of generating income. Uh, I also was passionate about what I write about. So it was health and fitness, personal development. I love it. I love sharing that message with people, but also not just my own fulfillment, but I thought about the people who I could impact my family and friends. People would come to me for help and I want to help them, but I'm only one person. So what if I just put all my knowledge and lessons into a book and then I can give them a book and I can help all these people that I want to help, whether I know them personally or whether they're complete strangers. So those were a few reasons for me wanting to write a book. But, you know, compare it to where I'm at, is it worth going through this WTF zone to get all those great things? Well, if my life's okay, and, and think about your own life, if your life is okay and kind of like I can get by, then people are comfortable, even comfortable with their discomfort. And they think, I'd love to have a book, but it's not worth the risk. And here's the problem in thinking. They think I can either write a book or I can stay where I'm at. You can't stay where you're at. You see, you're heading towards some destination no matter what. So if it's not the book, where are you heading towards? A year from now. See, a year from now, you can have a best-selling book. I promise you a year from now. 60 days or 90 days, you can even have a best-selling book. 
But let's say a year from now, you could have this, or where else are you going to be a year from now? You know, what about the money? Is it possible that that goes away? Can there be a crash in the economy and you're not prepared? Are you already losing money and you don't know what is it another year of being broke? How's that going to feel? What if your finances are even worse going the way that they're going? Or what if it's not about the money as much, but you think like I think whenever I'm, I'm procrastinating about writing a book and I think about all the different people out there in the world who are unhappy and who are suffering. And if they only have the knowledge that my book has. So I think about that. All these people who are struggling needlessly because I'd rather sit around and watch Netflix instead of put together these life lessons that I learned and shared it with them. And so how many people need a message that you have to share and they're, they're not getting it because you haven't stepped up and written your freaking book. So maybe that's one of the consequences, right? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential consequences over here in this with not writing a book. So you basically have option one and option two. Are there more than two options? Technically, yes, but let's just keep it simple. You write your book or you don't write your book. So don't compare what happens if you write your book with where you're at. Compare a year from now having a best-selling book with a year from now not having a best-selling book. And I'll say it again, this is the reason the people who suffer think about this. I don't have to shoot this video, right? Why am I shooting this video? Is it going to make a difference to me whether or not you write a best-selling book? I'm going to be doing okay one way or another. But I think about this. I think, what if there's someone who needs what I have to say right now? What if there's just one person watching this video who needs the message that I have to share and I say the words that get them started to write their book and then they go out and they impact thousands to tens of thousands of other people. I had something to do with that. But if I sit on my ass watching Netflix or watching TV or just, you know, goofing off and I don't record this video, then how many people are suffering needlessly? This is just, you know, it's me, it's my approach, but I believe that if you get outside of yourself and don't just think about what you're going to get from it, but think about all the people who are either going to benefit or suffer whether or not you write your book. That will get you past this first initial stumbling block. And this first stumbling block is this. It's the first C. Cost. So what's this going to cost you if you don't write the book versus you do write the book? So it might cost you a little bit of time and money to write the book, but it could cost you a lot more time and money not having a book, if that means your business suffers or doesn't grow as much as it could, right? So compare the two destinations and that's going to help you overcome this first thing. And the second thing you need is this. Courage. Here's the thing you might go, Derek, I'm motivated to write a book, but I have a couple problems. First of all, who am I to write a book? You know, what if, what if I have isn't any good? And even if I get started, how do I actually turn it into a best-selling book? I have the motivation to sit my ass down and write the book, but I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to waste my time writing a book that no one wants or that isn't going to add value to the marketplace. So one of the keys to having courage is to realize this. People aren't buying what you say. They're buying how you say it, how you deliver the information. Well, here's an insight. You might not know that until you actually start writing until you create your first book. See, my first book wasn't a bestseller. My first book wasn't particularly anything special, but it was that act of writing and going on the journey that I found my voice. But I had to believe in this one key point that someone needs to hear it said the way I have to say it. Someone needs to hear it from your mouth, with your words, the way you put it on paper, with your backstory, with your experiences, with the way you uh, get the information curated together. And they'll only get it if it's coming from you. That should give you some courage. The second thing that will give you some courage is get a freaking map of the WTF zone. Someone's gone, right? Someone's gone from a position similar to where you're at. Maybe you're dead broke. I was a dead broke ballet parker when I started. Maybe you're busy or maybe you don't feel you're a good writer or whatever your excuse is. There's someone who has the outcome of a best-selling book who started where you're at. They've gone through the WTF zone and they've made a map. They've written books. 
There's someone who's created a training course on it. There's someone who's created a roadmap to get to where you want to go. So find it. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Maybe the guy shooting this video has some mouse on how to get there. Hashtag just saying. The third thing that you need, boom, magically new chart. You're seeing this come up. So we have the cost, the courage. Now we need correction. What does this mean? Well, this means when you're here and you're starting out and you're taking this path to having your book, okay, people want to go, oh, we're going to, I'm just going to start here and go get a book. But as one of my mentors, Adam Markell, is fond of saying, there's no straight lines in the universe. You don't just go from here to best-selling book, right? Even if you get a path that someone else has followed, you think someone else's path is going to be your exact path? Of course not. You're going to have to find your own path. What that means is there's going to be a lot of course corrections to eventually get there. Okay. Now I know this is cliche to say, well, you got to fail to like succeed and failure is the path to success. And Thomas Edison failed, you know, a thousand times to create a light bulb, whether that's true or not. We've heard that before. You might have even heard an airplane is off course 90% of the time. I don't know whether that's true or not, but the principle remains that you can do a lot of course corrections and you can be way off course and still get to where you're going as long as you're correcting yourself. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you just about the benefits of failure in course correction. I'm going to flip it and blow your mind. I'm going to tell you about the detriment of being successful. I was at a seminar and we were on teams and trying to score the most amount of points in each round and have the most amount of points. Typical way of playing a game. And my team was rocking it. We were scoring 300 points, 400 points. We had a system. We were crushing the other teams. And I'm like, this is great. Let's just get really good at our system. Let's practice it. Let's refine it. But we got a working system. Then the leader of the seminar, Brandon Broadwater, comes in and says, you could be scoring a thousand plus points each round easily. Well, crap. What does this mean? It means our working system wasn't nearly as good as it could have been. And here's the thing. What do we have to do to find out the better system? I said to myself, we can't even do anything like what we're doing right now and score that many points. We have to do something completely different. We have to play this game entirely differently than we are playing it. And what that meant is we all started to fail. All the teams, their points went back down to zero because they were trying all these new things that didn't work. Okay. That's how it is in life. Eventually we figured it out. But here's the key point. Our success gave us the illusion that we were doing things great and we were maybe doing things okay, but not nearly as well as we could have done. And we had to fail to try things better or to find the better way. So what this means is your success can actually be holding you back. Whatever you're successful at in your life right now, if you're attached to that, to what's quote unquote working, what if that's holding you back from having five times as much success, 10 times as much success? What is settling for your nice little comfortable comfort zone of this is what works and I don't want to go outside of it. What if that's exactly what's holding you back? You have to be willing to fail course correct and embrace it. That's the path to this book. This is screwing up a bunch of stuff, but eventually getting the outcome that you want. So how do you do this course correction? Well, here's the big thing. You can work really hard and hard work can just get you going, you know, really, really solidly in the wrong direction, right? You can, you can go super fast sprinting in the wrong direction. So in order to actually go in the right direction, this course correction, all these little points right here, what they are, are feedback points. Okay. So feedback is what you need to make your course correction. Well, no, duh, Derek, come on. That's not a revelation. Well, I'm giving you the basics because most people seem to screw up the basics, even if they already know it. So you need the feedback. The feedback can be your own feedback, but here's the thing. It's very difficult to see your own blind spots. This feedback comes from a coach or a mentor who's been there and can help correct your course. Having someone outside yourself that can see your blind spots is essential. So that's going to help you get the course correction. If you don't have that, You'll start to go there and then you'll just course correct. You don't really know what you're doing and you're going every freaking direction except for where you want to be at. Okay. Not the smartest way to go about doing it, but how many people will 
get started and try to write a book and not get a coach or a mentor or a teacher or someone that's going to help them do it, the vast majority from what I've seen. So we have our three things. We have the cost of what it's costing you. And I'm going to give you one, one other thing to consider with this. Well, Derek, what if this costs me a lot of time and money? Well, so what? What if it costs you a couple thousand dollars in a year to have a best-selling book? Is that a lot? I mean, compare that to what people spend on college, education. They'll spend four years of their life, tens of thousands of dollars of, of money, go into debt with student loans to get a freaking piece of paper that doesn't even guarantee they have a job, and then they get a job. They don't even freaking like the job, and they spend years doing that. Some of them don't even use the, the degree that they got. Right? That's what people will spend just for a chance at some sort of steady career. What is that compared to maybe, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars and a year of trial and error to have a best selling freaking book that you can forever attach to your name as a best selling author? Think of the doors that opens up. Think of the income. Think of the fulfillment that's going to give you in your life. And compare that to what people would invest in a college education. It's night and day. It's ridiculous how much less this costs to have a best-selling book compared to what people are investing in otherwise. The courage. If you don't have belief in yourself, find someone who's been in your position, a similar position, and learn from them. Study others. The belief you don't have belief in yourself, have belief in other people and let their belief rub off on you. Find role models. And then finally, have course correction from people who can give you feedback from outside of yourself who can look at you and point you in the right direction. That's one of the things that I can offer all of these things. And you can get all of these things by signing up for my newsletter, ebookbestsellersecrets.com. And I also have some books, hashtag shameless plug, why authors fail, but I'm not here to sell you on this book. I'm actually going to give it to you absolutely free. I'll give you the book and the audiobook, digital book and audiobook. All you got to do is you go to ebookbestsellersecrets.com, sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to give you tips on how to get all three of these things. And then you'll get your first email from me. And then you'll reply to this email and say, Derek, I watched your video. You're so sexy and charming and amazing and just really butter me up. And then... Tell me what your biggest challenge is with self-publishing, getting your first book going, or if you have a book going and you're struggling to turn it into a bestseller, or maybe you're already successful and you want to take things even further. Give me your biggest challenge right now in self-publishing, and I personally read and reply to all of these emails, and I will shoot you a copy of my book, Why Authors Fail, completely on me to help ensure that you are successful on your journey to becoming a successful self-published author. This is Derek Depker. Take care.